Hello and welcome to the online worship service of the Good Shepherd United Methodist Church of North Fort Myers for October 7th and 8th. Thank you for being with us today. My name is Pastor Tom. Pastor Leo will be uh, leading us with scripture and a blessing. Um, Angel Dobson um, has created the video and done the editing for us. Thank you all for being here with us today. We worship together on Saturday evenings at 4.45 in the chapel and on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. in the sanctuary. At 9 a.m. is an adult Bible study that everybody is welcome to attend. We have other Bible study groups that meet throughout the week. They meet in the communities uh, here in North Fort Myers. Uh, we're starting a new book on October the 8th and a new study will begin for the next six weeks. If you're interested in being part of one of these studies in one of the communities or hosting or leading one, just contact the church. We'll be glad to get you the resources. Um, the DVD does most of the teaching. It's a wonderful study, a book written by Max Lucado, Jesus, the God who knows your name. It's a wonderful book, a great study. Invite you all to be part of it. The United Methodist Committee on Relief continues uh, their recovery efforts, rebuilding efforts here in North Fort Myers and across Charlotte County as well. Um, we're looking for day volunteers. So the large teams do still come. And however, there's work that needs to be done before and work afterwards. Uh, in, as these teams come in in large groups, they have to have things set up and we have to have things finished out. And so some day volunteers would be very helpful to keep the projects moving. Um, so if you're willing to volunteer, you'd like to serve uh, and help out uh, just for the day, any day, um, you make contact here with me at the church. I will submit your information and an application and the conference will then be calling you uh, when help is needed and for the times when you would be able to volunteer and serve. If you're interested, contact me, Pastor Tom, here at the church. On Tuesdays, church folks go to the All Souls Episcopal Church and prepare uh, for uh, the folks who will be receiving food and hygiene products and other items that they need. And so if you'd like to be part of the preparation on Tuesday or the distribution on Wednesday, uh, we'd love to hear from you and be part of this wonderful ministry and work as well. Please continue to make your hurricane preparations. Thankfully, everything has moved up the east coast and out into the ocean. Uh, we haven't had any major impacts here in southwest Florida this year. Um, the web address, the website information, that telephone number is how to apply for a special needs shelter. You have to do this each and every year and you can't do it after the storm cone is in our area. So if you haven't done that for the remainder of this year, please do so. Also remember we'll be telling you to do it next year as well. We are online on Facebook. We have a YouTube channel, which you can find us located there. There are different addresses ever so slightly. We have a, a website, which you can see there in yellow, and the My Well giving portal for the church. If you'd like to make a contribution to Good Shepherd United Methodist Church, just go to this website, goodshepherdumc.mywell.org slash give. And if you type that all in, you'll go to a secure portal, a place where you can um, make a secure transaction and a gift to the Good Shepherd United Methodist Church. Thank you for being with us this morning. Today, uh, it's good to be with you. Let us now receive uh, the Psalm of the Week, Psalm 19, read by Pastor Leah. Good morning my loving church family and friends. Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech, they use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet 
their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. He rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned. In keeping them there is great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We come to our time of joys and concerns. We are asked to pray for Debbie Kajersik, who has been moved to Lee Rehabilitation. Uh, she moved there on Wednesday. She'll be there for at least two weeks, recovering from the effects of a brain bleed that she suffered uh, last week. Jamie Cox has been diagnosed with Parkinson's and is struggling with daily life issues and has asked that we would pray for his comfort and discernment. Mark Smith was taken by ambulance um, in the last day to Orlando uh, with health concerns. Uh, the doctors are protecting his heart transplant that he received uh, several months ago, almost a year ago now, and um, they're being extra cautious with him. Gary Olson and Ellen Ratz continue their cancer treatments and, asks, and ask for our prayers for them. Let us join our hearts now in the prayers of the people, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we offer praise and thanksgiving that you are among us this day as we gather in worship. We feel your proud power. We celebrate your goodness, your presence among us. But Lord, how many times each day do you come to us, Lord Jesus? How many quiet prophets, how many whispered warnings are sent to catch our attention? For Lord, we confess that we are deaf. We are hard of hearing when your word comes to us. For we prefer to hear ourselves. We are attracted by noises and overwhelmed with the clamor and clatter of the world around us. Our attention is dull. Our perceptions are weak. 
Lord, open our ears to hear you speak. And how many times do we pass by, do you pass by unaware of your calm presence, unfeeling of your beckoning gaze? You smile at us and we frown. You watch over us and we avoid your view. We even ignore those who don't please our sight or assure our perceptions of beauty. Lord, open our eyes that we might see you. How often have we shunned your messengers, sending them away with harsh words and cold stares? How often have we hurt those who offered advice, guidance, and correction, which comes from you? Lord, we confess that we're too busy we're too self-absorbed to hear your call to repentance or to notice your invitation to wholeness. Forgive us, Lord, when through neglect, preoccupation, or wrongfulness, we turn our back on you. Teach us to see, to listen and to walk with an open heart so that we can welcome you and answer you when in grace and love you call us to follow. Lord, hear our prayers for all who were mentioned in our joys and concerns list. Hear our prayers for all who are on our hearts, O oh Lord. Hear our prayers for our church, that we may reflect your love, mercy, and grace to all people. Hear these in all our prayers, which are offered in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We give thanks for all the gifts, tithes, and offerings which are given to the Good Shepherd United Methodist Church, for it is by your support that we are able to be in ministry, and we appreciate all of your gifts. Thank you for your support. We encourage the several hundred of you who are watching us online to continue to support us and to add your support to our ministry here. Um, we are very happy to offer this opportunity for you, and we would invite you to support us as well. Let us now hear God's word from the Gospel of Matthew, the 21st chapter, verses 33 through 46. This is Jesus speaking. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and moved on to another place. When the harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his fruit. The tenants seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Then he sent other servants to them, more than the first time, and the tenants treated them the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. 
But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? He will bring those wretches to a wretched end, they replied, and he will rent the vineyard to other tenants who will give him his share of the crop at harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. Anyone who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces. Anyone on whom it falls will be crushed. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard Jesus' parables, they knew he was talking about them. They looked for a way to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowd because the people held that he was a prophet. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We're continuing our summer series in the Gospel of Matthew, as today its presentation is Life in the Vineyard. Life in the Vineyard. It's this parable, this straw, the proverbial straw that broke the back of the Pharisees. The truth that Jesus shares in this parable did not convert or correct the Pharisees. The truth did not result in Jesus' poll numbers and popularity rising and suddenly him having the power to resolve the evils and the sufferings of the people in Israel. Actually telling the truth resulted in Jesus' death. Telling the truth so angered the Pharisees and the other religious leaders that they now actively began a campaign which took less than three days to develop to have Jesus killed. Do you think that kind of stuff can really happen? That there could be so much anger at a thought that people would rally up to kill the speaker? It did. It still does. And yes, telling the truth can hurt. Well, what is it that made them so mad? Well, Jesus is in the temple in the days just after his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Just before this story, a chapter or so, he had thrown the money changers out. He had declared that the temple was to be a house of prayer. He has already bested the temple priests and the other religious leaders with his authority and his teachings. Nobody can stand in Jesus' way. Jesus now offers this parable to the Pharisees. Now, Jesus sets up this parable in typical in a typical Jewish vineyard the description is absolutely ordinary there's nothing uncommon in this description in any way it's quite an elaborate and wonderful Israeli uh, or Palestinian vineyard it's wonderful it was very common for landowners people who had great money to invest in a vineyard of this sort, and then to rent out the vineyard to tenant farmers, and then to send servants to collect a share of the annual crops. That tenants might rebel was possible, especially if the tenants felt that they were underpaid, underappreciated, and overworked. 
everyone knew about this reality. And there would have been a few in the crowd who perhaps agreed with the violence of the tenants in their treatment of the servants and even of the landowner's son. You know, power to the people and all. But most others would have agreed with the Pharisees' judgment against the tenant farmers because the tenants had clearly broken the law. They had murdered the servants and the son. That was the law of the land, which was the accepted system, the system that the Pharisees sought to maintain because you see many of them were landowners because they profited from this system. That was the way it was. That's what they preferred. Now the Pharisees get upset when they realize that they are the tenants in the story and that Jesus has led them to pronounce their own harsh judgment from God, who is the landowner, Israel being the vineyard, The servants are prophets sent by God to correct Israel, to guide Israel. The son of the landowner is the Messiah who is sent by God to Israel. They're further offended when they realize that their position as tenants will end by their own judgment and that they will be replaced by others. Oh, This cannot be. How can we be replaced? Which others? Who others? Oh my gosh, not those horrible Gentiles. Then Jesus quotes from Daniel 2 and again from Psalm 18 in the verses that follow the parable as he interprets the parable to them as if they couldn't figure it out, but he helps them. These were well-known scriptures to the Jewish religious leaders, and they would have recognized the succession of servants as the prophets and the conquering kingdoms of Israel. They would also have recognized the stone as a reference to the Messiah and to judgment. The stone that was rejected and becomes the chief Cornerstone is a well-recognized reference, specifically from Psalm 118. It clearly refers to the Messiah. That the stone will cause those who fall on it to be shattered refers to the destruction of all the previous earthly empires and alliances which have been defeated uh, by Israel and by God over the centuries. The temple leaders and Pharisees had formed alliances with many of these to assure their power and their preferential positions. And they're deeply insulted that Jesus would say that they would be replaced by others as God comes to establish his kingdom on earth. What Jesus is doing is he's calling them to repent. Repent. The Pharisees could not accept this truth. Repent or perish. It's a very common prophetic refrain. They absolutely refuse to repent. They determine to solve the problem in their way, which is to destroy Jesus. Jesus has made it clear that they, the Pharisees, are out of relationship with God. They are sinners. They are not truly righteous. They will not be blessed. So they must repent. And they refuse. Isn't this actually our reaction When someone tells us, any one of us, that the lifestyle that we're enjoying or that we prefer is not consistent with God's will and God's law, repent, repent, repent. 
Why? 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 Why should I repent? I'm just fine. I've been following the rules my whole life. My life is how I like it. I know what is best for me. And that is the problem. We too often live the lives we most enjoy and forget that as disciples we are called to live the lives that God invites us to live. So I'm asking you, are you being attentive to God's call on your life? Do you hear God speak? Do you ever respond to anything that God places on your heart? Can you hear God's call and act upon it? Because the truth is that God is in charge and that God requires disciples to be faithful, obedient, and to bear a harvest. We receive God's grace freely, but our grateful response is to be faithful and committed disciples. And as disciples, we must be attentive and humble each and every day to hear God's call and to follow where God leads. We don't get to make it up. Our preferences are not to be our guides. God has sent prophets and representatives, and all of this has been and continues to be rejected by many, even among the devout. Repentance and devotion to God, you see, is daily work. It is lifelong work. Because Jesus is Lord and Savior. Yes, he is rejected. And still vindicated by God. You can believe it or not. You can live it or not. And that is everyone's choice. It is everyone's opportunity. But let us as disciples keep the vineyard healthy and prosperous and be ready to welcome the servants of God and his son when they come to us from God. Let us listen carefully, attentively, and receptively to the truth that they bring. Let us repent and believe that Jesus is the Messiah. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Pastor Leah will now come and offer us words of blessing and benediction. Let us pray. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Gracious and loving God, we give you all honor and glory. We thank you for this wonderful day of worship. Thank you for your love and your mercy. We thank you for the gift of communion in which we receive your grace. Lord God, we celebrate your presence with us today. We hear you calling us. Jesus, our Lord and Savior,
We accept your calling and we repent. We surrender our lives to you because you know what is best for us. Lord Jesus, help us to be humble, faithful disciples, to follow you in your mission, and to welcome all persons in the name of Jesus. Amen. Friends, open your hearts and hear the call of God. Receive the blessing of God in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit today and always. Amen. Shalom, my friends. Go now in peace.